What exactly is an Axis ACAP application? In previous content we have looked a lot at how we can develop applications and what is important to think of when designing and architecturing the applications. But in this video we will take a step back and look more at what is an ACAP application and how can we use it to build our product or improve our product. So before diving into any technical details and explaining how it uh, works and how it can be used, we're going to take a look at um, an Axis camera and see what it actually looks like when we use an application. So an Axis application is simply an, a plugin or an external application, a third party application that we can install to our camera system. So here we see a normal Axis camera. This is the typical a web interface you will see if accessing the camera's IP address. And what we can see here is that there is a tab in the configuration uh, which is for applications. And here we can see the different applications that is currently installed in the camera. So we have two different applications from Axis and we have a third part application. And this is the nice thing about applications that they are very easy to install. So we can easily distribute them to um, our uh, camera maintainer and let anyone install the applications. It doesn't require much technical knowledge to install or manage an application. So what we can do here if we want to install a new application is to press the add app um, button and we can find our application which is dist distributed as an EAP package. We select this package and press install. And the application binaries are now installed together with all the other files uh, in the camera. So this means that the application will, after this run, completely embedded in the camera without any need for external connectivity in the camera. So here we can see that the new application has been installed. And one of the functionalities that we get from the ACAP application platform is that we can monitor and control the run state of the application. So we can see that application is now stopped. But I can easily start the application. And applications can have different configurations if we want to run it once or if we want to have it continuously running. And if it is continuously running, the application framework will automatically make sure that the application is restarted after a firmware upgrade or if the camera is re rebooted. So one of the interfaces we can see now is that we can read the logs from the application. So this is text messages that are created from the application itself. We can also see that this particular application exposes a web interface which we can use to configure the application or get information from the configuration. While this application, for example, does not have any web application or web interface. So by pressing this button, we can see that we are still hosted on the camera, but this whole web interface is created by the application itself. So this is nothing that exists in the camera from the beginning. This can be totally customized to whatever we want to by our application. In this particular example, it's just a simple configuration uh, which allows us to set parameters in the applications that are used um, when running the application. But we can look at a more complex example. So let's for example look at this application from Axis. This is the Axis Object Analytics application. And uh, this particular application is something that is called a pre-installed called a pre-installed application. So when we install the, or when we get the camera uh, with a fresh firmware ver version, this application is already installed. But apart from that, it acts very much like all the other third party applications. So this application does also have log messages and we can start and stop it. And we can also open the web interface. So we can see that this web interface is a bit more complex than the previous one. And this web interface can be used to configure applications and uh, create our different scenarios. And it can also be used for live feedback from the application so that we can verify 
that application is configured as we expect and that it is working as we expect. So in this example we have configured a, um, a zone where we want to detect people. So the configuration can easily be done here by dragging and dropping the different nodes and uh, setting the different parameters. And uh, we can also see the live inference of the application. So if I turn around we will see that I get detected as a person. So this is typical things that you can do using your ACAP applications. You are not limited in any way here about what the application interface looks like since you yourself implement all of this when you create the application. But let's look a bit more at how we actually implement applications and um, what um, help we get from Axis or the platform. So the Axis has something that is called an SDK, a software development kit, which contains uh, all the things that we need to implement our applications. So for example, we have the compiler tool chain, which uh, includes the compilers that we need to cross compile our uh, binaries for the correct architecture. So we can use our, uh, we can write our applications in C or C++ and then compile them to binaries that can run in the camera. We also have a lot of helper libraries, uh, different libraries that help us to integrate with the camera or to use the functionality of the camera. We have documentation. It's a web-based documentation that explains the different APIs. It, it explains how the platform works and uh, all the information that we need to um, create and build our applications. And we also have different um, tools for the host developer machine. So different tools to create the packages uh, and uh, look at the packages, configure um, the um, compiler tool chain and so forth. And the result when we build all this is an ACAP application or an EAP file, which is um, the file that contains the full application, uh, all the files that is needed for the application. And that is the only thing we need when we install it in the camera. But the ACAP uh, framework is so much more than just an SDK. On some other camera vendors, we see that they provide an SDK, but it's just the um, tools that you need to create a binary that you then can um, in some way put in the camera and run in camera. But the ACAP framework also contains a platform, the, um, the, the ACAP platform, the Axis Camera Application Platform, um, which is the, what ACAP stands for. So this is a full runtime that is running in a camera. Um, and allows you to do all this thing with ACAP. So we see that we could manage the state of the ACAP from the camera and graphical interface, which make it easy to install it and easy to control if it should be running or not. Uh, and also make sure that if the camera firmware is upgraded, the application does still work after that. So that is something that you don't get if you just get a compiler tool chain and um, compile your own binaries, which you then have to manually handle. But we also have something that is called signed applications, which means that we can, um, we can sign our applications using the Axis services and the camera will then uh, be able to verify this signature to make sure that we can't install any unsigned applications uh, in our camera, which makes it a lot, a lot safer. In the camera we also have different hardware abstraction layers. So we have a lot of different camera models, which has different architectures and different um, hardware, different DLPUs, different uh, accessory um, hardware and so forth. And uh, these things are um, often hidden. So the application doesn't need to communicate directly with the kernel drivers, but instead there are typically a daemon running in the camera, which is responsible for com communicating with the hardware or the drivers. And then the application uh, just uh, just need to interface with the um, daemon that is running in the camera. And this makes it relatively easy to create applications that can be installed in a wi wide variety of different cameras. We also have the helper libraries. The helper libraries are um, supplied as 
uh, bi binary libraries and header files in the SDK. Uh, but the camera systems actually also contains a lot of libraries um, as the binary shared objects. So this means that we don't typically need to distribute our libraries together with the um, application, uh, but um, they are already distributed in the firmware from the beginning which means that multiple applications can share the same libraries and make the applications much smaller in that way. And we have the runtime tools to allow us to install the applications and manage them. So for example, installing the applications, we saw that we could do it through the um, camera's user interface using the web interface. But we can also do it with the Vapix API, for example. So with a simple API call, we can install, uh, install the application or we can do it using other um, client softwares. Uh, so you can do it from your VMS or you can do it from Access Companion, which is um, a Windows based application to manage your cameras. Or you can do it from the Access Device Manager uh, where you can install the same applications on multiple cameras at the same time. So that is very useful if you have large in installations. So it's a full ecosystem of things that we need to run um, some kind of code or program in the camera on the edge. So what is the point of running the camera? What or running the application in the camera? What can it do? The application can interface with a lot of different things um, with the help of the ACAP platform. So for example, we can um, interface with the IO ports the inputs and outputs, the digital um, signals uh, or the di digital connections on the camera. Uh, so if we have other hardware that we connect to the camera, we can read the states of the IO ports and we can um, set the states of the IO ports. We can also collect images from the camera. Uh, so we can get uh, video or images as compressed or uncompressed, um, read directly from the camera into our application without any streaming or over the network involved. And the same goes for audio. Uh, many cameras have, um, have microphones and in some cases we can use um, speakers. Um, so we can um, interface with um, the audio devices from the application. We also saw um, in the example that we had uh, the system log where we could write, the application could write uh, log messages to the log and then we could read it from our client computer. So that is one way of interfacing with external devices that we write in the log and then we can read the log um, at any point later. But we also have events, the access events or the metadata events, um, which can be streamed over, over RTSP for example. Um, so this can be often easily integrated in your VMS solutions. So the application can and create events in the camera, which then will automatically appear in your VMS. And the application can also read events uh, from the camera's event bus. So if we have another application that is producing events, or if the camera is producing events when some specific event happen, then you can have your application um, read these events and trigger on um, a combination of the events or um, something like that. Um, and then um, perhaps produce a new event that can be consumed by your VMS. And of course, your application can also interface directly with your um, cloud system or your client system if you prefer to implement something yourself. So for example, if you have an AWS um, cloud account and you want to perform some kind of um, analytics on metadata or um, subselected images or something like that, the application can automatically upload them there. So it could do that, for example, with HTTP post requests, or it could use MQTT, or um, really anything that you, as long as you can compile um, a client library for this application, then you can run it in the camera. So this is some of the things that you can um, do with applications. So it really opens up a lot of different use cases where you want to do some kind of logic or analysis uh, or even deep learning or machine learning on the edge device um, in a way that you're not restricted by um, the bandwidth of your network. 
or the stability of your network. So this application will continue to run um, regardless of, of the network state. As long as the camera is powered, um, the application will run in the camera. Uh, so you could, for example, cache the things in your camera and then access it at a later point. So if you have any ideas for applications or products where you could use this kind of technology, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Fixed It Consulting. You can see my email address down here. Um, and uh, yeah, we can go from there and take a discussion about what you want to do and how we can um, get started with it and how, how we can assist you in the process.